Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am Bert the Stormtrooper and this is the home of That's Just Prime, the comprehensive Optimus Prime review series. I also review other Transformers, lots of G1 stuff, as well as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Ghostbusters, GoBots, and pretty much any other toy that may jump out at me. I also do the occasional arcade and pinball machine videos, unboxings, blogs, challenges, and miscellaneous videos where my daughter usually makes fun of me. Those are a lot of fun. If you're new to the channel, thanks for checking me out. Please be sure to click that subscribe button and don't forget to give me a thumbs up and share if you like what you see. Hello and welcome, I'm Bert the Stormtrooper and today we're going to be taking a look at the Transformers Studio Series 65 Bumblebee Movie Blitzwing and I don't know if I love this toy yet because I haven't opened it but we're going to find out at the end of the video. Released in the fall of 2020, he is brand new starting to hit stores right now as of the time of this recording. I found him just today at Target and he is retailing for approximately $30. So we have here the Studio Series. Again, we've got that window box showing us the figure already packed in robot mode, which I've said this a couple of times, I'm not a fan of that. I miss the days when Transformers used to come in their alt modes, uh, since the whole idea is that they're robots in disguise and you had to transform them into robot mode, but that's how they're packing them nowadays, so what are you gonna do? Uh, over here on the side, we've got Studio Series 65 with a screenshot of, uh, I think that's a screenshot, of Blitzwing from the movie. And then over here on the side, we got some artwork, which I think may also be a screenshot of Blitzwing from the movie or some actual um, like picture art from the movie itself. And then on the back, we've got the packaging art showing us Blitzwing in both his uh, jet mode and his robot mode. So let's go ahead and get Blitzwing out of the package and check it out. And here we have Blitzwing out of the package and transformed in the jet mode and showing everything that he comes included with him. So we've got this uh, cool background. Of course, the studio series always give us these nice display backgrounds. And I'm going to do something really cool with that one uh, here in just a little bit. He also comes with his instruction sheet, which is, you know, it's a good enough instruction sheet. The transformation for this figure I actually found to be quite simple. Uh, I love it when the transformation is complex to complex enough to be entertaining. You know, it keeps you entertained and it's fun, but it's not too complicated and easy to get through. And I find that Blitzwing hits all those uh, check boxes. So that, that was really nice. He also comes with two weapons, uh, technically four, I guess. He does come with this uh, kind of machine gun that we're gonna use in uh, the, the uh, robot mode. And also the, uh, I don't know what this is called, but it's whatever his hand transformed into when he ripped out Bumblebee's voice box. That that piece comes included as well. And as you can see, we can store those on the bottom of the jet mode there. And then he's also got the two tanks here, tanks or weapons pods or missiles or whatever you want to call these. Those are also included and they're removable as well. But here you see Blitzwing in the jet mode and the jet mode looks really nice. Now, one thing that is sort of confusing about the jet mode for me is that in the movie he was an f4 phantom or at least he was supposed to be inspired by an f4 phantom uh this is very much not an f4 phantom uh this has been said before it's a, it's a more close approximation to an f16 maybe if he had the if the the wing the tail wing here was a single tail wing instead of a dual split thing uh, it it kind of resembles more of an F-16 than anything else. It doesn't really, it's not exactly anything uh, a real jet uh, is. It, it's it's inspired by, let's just say it that way. But he looks more inspired like uh, from an F-16 rather than an F-4. Uh, but it's cool. I like the, um, the little dual wing there in the back, the tail fin rather. <laughs> That's kind of a cool touch. And then you can take the... Uh, the rudders or the stabilizers back here and you can kind of bend them down if you want so you can kind of make the little bit of a cross here you can do that and you know you can just kind of play around with it since it's a fake make-believe jet anyway right you can kind of play along with it and, and just kind of make it look the way you want it to look a very cool jet mode though i really do like this a lot it's approximately eight and a half inches long about two inches at the top of the cockpit two and a half if you want to go to the top of the tail fan and he's got a wingspan of about seven inches and going all the way around he looks really really nice i really do love this jet mode a little bit of kibble back here um in the, in the back here for the uh, landing gear and the landing gear slash feet uh, but really not that bad in terms of kibble we've definitely seen a lot worse so this actually does a pretty good job now going around the bottom uh, there is going to be some stuff here that we're going to see that uh is, is a little undesirable but overall relatively clean so we've got this uh, little fake piece of the cockpit here that we're going to see in robot mode and we can see the arms tucked away right there under the wings but of course the missile pods or the weapons pods or the tanks call them whatever you want uh, they are helping to kind of 
camouflage those a little bit. You do have landing gear one more time. So, they, you know, they don't roll. They're just molded in. But you got the landing gear here on the back. And then you got this retractable one here in the front. So, overall, a very nice jet. I actually do like this a lot. Now, for a couple of comparisons, let's bring in the also Voyager size Optimus Prime from the same movie. So, you can see what these guys look like or scale like together. And here he is with actual Bumblebee in his uh, later mode, his uh, Volkswagen mode. So you can see what these guys look like together. And finally, we'll take him off to the side and we'll bring him in with his actual Bumblebee in the actual mode that he was when these two met in the movie. So you can see what these guys look like together. So there you go. There's, uh, there's some comparisons for you and we're going to get right into the transformation. And the transformation for this guy, again, it's not difficult. It's simple, yet complex enough to where it's still entertaining and fun to do every time. I am really having a lot of fun with this figure. So to get started, we're going to come around the bottom and we're just going to remove all the weapons. So we're going to take out the tanks, set those off to the side. We're going to take out the little um, hand peas, a little throat ripper thing. One thing to note about this is that it does have this little, it's got a five millimeter port. I'm going to show you how to use that in robot mode uh, that could plug in, you know, in any five millimeter port. It's also got this little tiny peg right there on the side. And as you saw, we had that pegged into the side or, or rather the bottom of the stabilizer there. That's how the instructions show you to do it. I find it unfortunate. They molded this port right here I don't know why they didn't just go ahead and make it to where we could peg it right there. It, it cannot be done. The port is too big for the peg, but that would have been the perfect place for that. I don't know why they didn't make it look like this instead. That would have been a little more cohesive and a lot better storage, I think, than just plugging it to the bottom of the stabilizer. That's just me. But anyway, take that off, set it off to the side, and then we're going to take this little machine gun piece. We're going to take this off. There's a little port right there, or a slot rather, on the bottom part of that that was pegged into this tab right here. And uh, that's it. We're ready to transform. So we're going to start right here with the landing gear. Fold that up. In fact, let me just back up the camera just a little bit. So we put the landing gear up. Let's see, where do we want to start? Let's go ahead and start right here at the cockpit. Turn this around. Open up the cockpit and actually leave that, leave that alone for now. Let's just go ahead and take the nose of the plane. We're going to unpeg it. It's pegged right here. And then this is going to come down. There's a slot on the bottom of the nose that's going to tab into that little tab right there that was under or behind the landing gear. So we're going to go ahead and put that there. That's ready to go. Okay, let's go ahead and separate this whole piece here. This is all going to separate and swing up on these two hinges here. Now, the back of the arms are this uh, top piece of the uh, wing right here. So we're going to push these down right there and right there and just separate all of this. These are tabbed into tabs. These have ports that are tabbed into this part of the fuselage right under here and they go in rather tight. So those are gonna come off. So those two ports were tabbed in that, that right there and right there. And then these are the pieces of the wings that were here and here. All right, so this whole thing is gonna come up and do I need to move my camera up? I sure do. Let's bring it up a little more. So this whole thing is gonna come up and over. Once you get up here, we're going to open up the cockpit and we're going to bring up the headpiece and push it back until it snaps into place. Mine is really tight and uh, sometimes takes some doing. There you go. Close up the cockpit. And now that's going to let you bring this whole thing down and just over the cockpit there. Go ahead and bring the arms out and straighten them. Take these little panels here. We're going to spin these around to the back and straighten out the hands. Same thing here, we're gonna bring the arm down, take this panel, that was the wing piece. We're gonna rotate this around to the back of the forearm and rotate the fist. And then we can take these little fins right here, bring these up and out to whatever angle you like. And finally, this piece here is gonna stick out just like that. So that's all set and ready to go. Now we're gonna take this, uh, the wing and the upper part of the fuselage, we're gonna untap this from the legs this is going to come up. This panel is going to fold in and around on itself. And then there's two hinges here. We're going to separate this like so. We're going to bring it up. And these two tabs are going to go into these two slots. And you want to make sure that they go in there all the way in and get tight. Out of the box for me, these were not very tight. So anytime I tried moving the arms around, 
the wings would come off and then the chest piece would move up. Those tabs on this part of the fuselage is kind of what's keeping this whole upper body together. So you want to make sure you push those in all the way so that they're tabbed in securely. Otherwise, that's going to happen anytime you try to play with it. All right, so tab that in tight. And then finally, we're going to take the wing tips and we're going to rotate these up just like that. Uh, those are ready for the missile pods, but I think I'm going to wait to the end. Let's work on the legs here. Uh, let's take these two side skirts here and just separate these. We're going to take the back of the jet and split it. We're going to take the tail fin, rotate it all the way down. Take the stabilizer, rotate it down. Bring this whole thing up and over, and this is going to tab into the inside of the leg right there. Bring the foot out and bring out the toe. Finally, rotate that around. Same thing on this side. So we're going to bring the tail fin down, stabilizer down, bring the foot in, tab it into place, bring down the foot, bring out the toe, rotate it. And now we're just going to give them some weapons. So bring in the weapons pods or the missile pods or the tanks and just tab these in. I kind of like to tab them so they're pointing up just like this. And here is Blitzwing in robot mode and I think he looks amazing. Here in robot mode Blitzwing is just under seven inches at the top of the head about seven and a half if you go up here to the wing tips and again he looks really great I mean he looks right out of the movie he looks fantastic. We'll come in close and take some look uh, uh, yeah take a closer look at some of the details here we'll try to zoom in check that out that face is gorgeous i absolutely love how that looks i love the inclusion of what appears to be an oxygen mask like a pilot would wear that is so so cool i love the look of this piece of the cockpit just kind of pointing forward with the rest of the cockpit down here i just such a cool look to me i really like the way that looks uh he looks big he looks he's not lanky he's slim but he's not lanky he still looks like he can do some damage he just looks big and imposing really nice figure all the way around not a lot of kibble very uh, relatively clean backpack here just the wings on the back and not much else sticking out you still got a little bit of wings down here on the legs that just looks so so good to me for articulation the head can go uh, up and it's on a ball joint so it can go up and down side to side the arms again the shoulders can rotate forward and backwards as long as far as the wings are going to allow you then they're also going to go in and out right there you got a rotation at the bicep double bend at the elbow and you have a rotation at the wrist this hand is static but this hand this arm has all the same articulation and i unpegged this see what i mean you got to make sure that these are in tight all the way. The right arm has all the same articulation as the left. One more added piece of articulation is that the fingers on this hand can open and close. And uh, that's a really cool feature that I'm going to show off here in just a moment. Uh, waist can uh, go a little bit side to side. Not a lot about that far because of the skirts hitting uh, the rest of the fuselage. The legs can go forward that far, back that far. They can go in and out that far. They can rotate right there at the thigh. You got a bend at the knee, and you also have a um, an ankle tilt, which is part of the or It's part of the transformation. So I don't know if that was meant to be that way, but it is. Uh, I guess it's a happy circumstance that it happens that way. So you got a nice ankle tilt there. Very very nice. So let's look at weapons. So one more time, we had this little machine gun. It's almost like a machine gun with an engine and with, with fuselage. This is a really, really cool looking piece. And this mounts very nicely because you've got a peg for the hand to hold, but then you've also got that tab that's going to tab into the arm here. So it does that. It, it, it really pulls off that effect that the movie, live action movie transformers tend to do where the arm transforms into the weapon. And it just kind of, um, I have not been having this much trouble with these. But of course, now that I've got it in front of a camera, now it's when it's going to decide to pop off all over the place on me. So anyway, yeah, this really pulls off that look where the weapon is supposed to be part of the arm that just transformed out and it's all integrated. That looks really good. I absolutely love the way that looks. And then, of course, we'll take this one out. And then on the other side, we can take off this hand and we can replace it with this hand. And again, I'm going to zoom in on this one in just a moment. And again, it does kind of look like 
it's still the hand, but it's transformed. You can kind of see a little bit of detail there of fingers, but also you've got this whole, you know, you see the thumb there, you've got the, the fingers up here on the top there, but then you've got this rest of this blade piece sticking out, uh, which he used to rip out uh, Bumblebee's voice box, if you remember. So that is really, really cool. So we'll go ahead and put his hand back on real quick for some comparisons. Let's get him standing nice and straight and imposing. I really love this figure. I'm, I've been having so much fun with this figure. Now for some comparisons. Here is one more time with the Voyager class Bumblebee movie Optimus Prime. You can see what these guys look like together. And again, it's a very good size Voyager. Prime is just a little bit taller than Blitzwing at the head. But overall, he does Blitzwing does look a uh, big and imposing and dangerous like a Decepticon should look when compared to any Autobot. So yeah, that looks really, really good. Uh, and then here he is with Bumblebee Volkswagen, Bumblebee. So you can see what these guys look like together. And again, it's just, he looks so small, uh, as he should, as he should. He should look big and imposing next to these Autobots. And then finally, one more time, we'll bring in Bumblebee uh, in the Jeep mode, which is the accurate uh, way that he was. This is the mode that he had in the movie. If you haven't seen the movie by now, go watch it, because it, it really is a good movie. Uh, but this is the actual accurate mode that Bumblebee was in that scene where uh, him and Blitzwing met in the movie. So that, there you go. Very, very cool. And I promised you I was going to do something very cool with this. I think this is the first time that I have actually used the background that comes with a Studio Series figure to do a display piece. And uh, I just had to because this is so cool. So I was telling you that we could do something cool with that articulation, that added articulation that he has in the right hand. So you can open that up. And if you've got the Jeep Bumblebee, because he's got that double joint on the neck where he could look up, he could look up, you can actually make this happen right here, right out of the movie, that scene where Blitzwing is holding Bumblebee by the neck over the precipice with that whatever this thing is and removes his uh voice box that is so cool that you can actually recreate that scene and do this pose with these two figures if you have them such a cool figure so final verdict for studio series 65 blitzwing i love this toy again the jet it's a good looking jet. It's not the correct jet that we saw in the movie, but it's still a very good looking jet mode with not a lot of kibble. So it's a, it's a very nice alt mode. The robot mode is beautiful. Right out of the movie, he looks big, he looks imposing, he looks dangerous. He is uh, just a very nice looking screen accurate figure. Transformation, simple, but still intricate and complex enough to be entertaining and fun. And you don't dread doing it. You just want to do it over and over and over because you want to see this figure in both modes. And then finally, the interactivity with Bumblebee and the fact that you can do this with it. This is an absolute fantastic figure and i think that about covers the studio series 65 bumblebee movie voyager class blitzwing what did you think of this figure let me know down in the comments below give me some thumbs up subscribe and hit that bell icon so you're notified when i upload a new video i've got a donate button up there if you want to hit on that i certainly would appreciate it please share with your friends if you like what you see and i'll talk to you next time